Well, hello once again, everybody. We're going to talk here about HIV prophylaxis, commonly referred to as PrEP. Now, <clears throat> this is not super common on your exam, but uh, it is something you're going to run into on a pretty regular basis if you're working in the clinic because this is becoming more and more popular. And it's also advertised quite a bit on TV. So it is something that you will want to be aware of. <clears throat> prior to your exam because it is fair game, uh, but it is a lower, a little bit lower yield as well. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated and certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get notifications as I put more and more videos up. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start with a vignette. So we got a 24-year-old coming into the clinic for his annual physical. He's generally healthy and has no chronic illnesses or complaints at this time. He's on no medications. You note on his sexual history that while he identifies as straight, he is occasionally sexually active with men. He says that he uses condoms sometimes, and sometimes he gets drunk and forgets to wear a condom. He denies any drug use aside from recreational marijuana. He does say that he gets checked for HIV twice per year, good. And he says that he's read about a pill that you can take to reduce the risk of contracting HIV, and he's interested in this. All his vaccinations are up to date, physical exams normal, and vitals are within normal limits. So what's this patient asking for? What's the medication he's referring to? Is he a candidate for this medication and why? If he is a candidate, what should be done prior to starting this medication? And if he does start this medication, how often does he need to be tested for HIV? These are all very commonly asked questions about PrEP. Um, so what that means is you want to know the answer to all these questions and the rationale. So PrEP is a medical strategy to use antiretrovirals to reduce the risk of contracting HIV. So we're using antiretrovirals not as treatment, but as a tool for prevention. The most common regimen is tenofovir and tricitabine. However, they are coming out with more and more um, regimens, or they're testing more regimens, including one of them as a, vac not a vaccine, a, uh, a shot that you can get um, that you only have to take once a month as opposed to every day. So that may be preferable for some people. But as for now, what we use is oral pills, emtricitabine, tenofovir, um, and they're combined. So you only take one pill per day. And often you will hear this referred to as its brand name, which is Truvada. However, there is another one. Okay, who are the at-risk populations? Well, it's going to be men who have sex with men and heterosexually active people who... Uh, number one, maybe in, uh, active with an HIV partner. So we call that a serodiscordant couple where one is HIV positive, the other is HIV negative. Or they engage in anal sex with inconsistent use of condoms. So both have to apply. And that's why I highlight here that it's men who have sex with men and heterosexuals because both certainly can engage in anal intercourse. Um, or if they've been diagnosed with a venereal disease within the last six months. And then IV drug users who share injection equipment. So this is kind of common sense. These are patients who are at risk for HIV. These are the different um, routes of exposure. And you can see that receptive anal intercourse is the most common. However, it's only about one in a hundred uh, chance of getting HIV with uh, exposure uh, via anal intercourse. So it's still not super high odds. Okay, who's not eligible? HIV positive individuals. So these people should be on two NRTIs, such as tenofovir, and an integrase inhibitor. So if we were to give these patients PrEP, we're only giving them two NRTIs, and the problem with that is that the virus can gain resistance. That's why we always use three drugs. Also, those who have been exposed to HIV in the last month, they could be in the process of, of seroconverting. So we want to make sure that uh, there's been no exposure in the last month. Otherwise, we'll wait and test them later, and then we can think about PrEP if they're HIV negative. Those with symptoms of HIV infection, I go over that in the uh, overview video of HIV, so please go back and watch that if you haven't yet. And those with severely compromised renal function, and that would be defined as a creatinine clearance of less than 60. 
Tenovavir amtricitabine is our antiretroviral anti regimen of choice that's used for PrEP. In order for it to be fully effective, the pill needs to be taken every day. However, if the patient does not want to take it every day, what we can do if they're engaging in anal intercourse uh, is that we can give it in the 2-1-1 strategy. So you would take two pills um, the day before sex and then one pill the day after sex and one pill two days after sex and then they don't need to take it every day. However, the problem with that is that, you know, if you're having sex a lot, it's a lot to keep track of. And with vaginal intercourse, they would need to take it seven days before sex and seven days after. I mean, if you're not having sex frequently, who the heck plans a week ahead of sex, right? So those people would probably be best to be on it every day. There are a number of adverse effects. Um, the big one that you need to be aware of is the exacerbation of Hep B. So if these patients do have Hep B, uh, we need to be very, uh, very careful about discontinuation. And then there, there are some others. Decreased bone mineral density while they're on PrEP, it's reversible. Once they go off PrEP, they should go back to normal. And then, you know, your typical adverse effects like an allergic reaction, there can be some renal compromise, weight gain, dyslipidemia, and the most common is GI upset. But, you know, that's nausea and stomach ache and diarrhea and stuff like that that's pretty inconsequential. And it tends to, those, those symptoms tend to become a little bit less severe, less prevalent, the longer you're on the drug. Now the management, um, before we start PrEP, we want to do an HIV screen. We want to get renal function tests, creatinine and GFR, because remember it's contraindicated if you're below 60. We want to do an STD screen, so that includes our venereal diseases, Hep B and Hep C. Um, now remember how to read your Hep B panel. Go back and watch my video on viral hepatitis if you don't understand how to do that. And then we want to do a pregnancy test if it is a woman. Um, now on CCS, you need to order the Hep B surface antibody, Hep B surface antigen, and Hep B core antibody. Now once you give these people PrEP, then you need to follow up with an HIV test every three months a serum creatinine every six to 12 months, and a pregnancy test every three months if it is a female. So what we do is we typically write these prescriptions for three months worth, 90 pills, and then when it's time for them to come in for a refill, we do the HIV and the pregnancy test at that point. Now you also wanna counsel the patient, just general sexual health counseling. So first of all, PrEP does not protect against other STIs or pregnancy. So that's common sense to us, but it might not be common sense to everybody else. Um, you should still take other precautions, including condom use, stopping IV drug use, and ask partner about HIV status. So a lot of people hook up, uh, probably not a good idea in general, but if you do, it never hurts to ask about their status. Uh, you should inform them of proper use of condoms, meaning uh, only put the condom on when you're erect, hold the base of the penis, and leave some space at the tip so in case there is ejaculation, you're not going to break the condom. You should follow up every three months, as mentioned, and then inform them regarding signs and symptoms of acute HIV infection. So these were the questions that we asked the patients asking about PrEP. The medication is tenofovir emtricitabine. That's going to be asked on your exam. They won't say PrEP. They'll say tenofovir and emtricitabine. Is he a candidate? Yes, because he um, is a man, man who has sex with men. That usually means anal intercourse, but not always. It may be a good thing to ask. And more importantly, inconsistent condom use. If he is a candidate, what should be done? We talked about that. Screen for HIV, other STDs, get renal function tests, and uh, then our typical counseling. And if he does start this medication, he should be tested every three months. That's very important. And then this is just a recap. I'm not going to go over all this again, uh, but uh, this is the critical stuff for you to know for your exam.